one of the key things that's important to understand is that today there are a lot of options for spirituality. We're actually in a very lucky and fortunate situation in our life where spirituality and words like mindfulness and meditation have become commonplace. Everyone seems to be talking about it. Nobody wants to talk about God, nobody wants to talk about religion, but meditation and mindfulness is, is an open topic of, of conversation. I was on the flight here from London going to Bangkok and I was wearing my Nanak Nam t-shirt very proudly and one of the air stewardesses was standing at the back and I was sort of trying to you know stretch my legs and stand at the back of the plane it's a long long flight and she said to me she said I noticed you from the minute you walked in she said you look very striking you know matching the star matching clothes that alone is quite a good way to stand out and she, she looks at me and I've got this big logo on my t-shirt she says what are you are you some sort of yoga teacher and I didn't know how to explain it I said yes yeah, sort of and I started talking about how instead of yoga there's a meditation practice that I practice and it specifically is involved with mantra the use of chanting a word that's it she was hooked she was so fascinated. And then we spent 15 minutes talking about meditation. She says, oh, I must try meditation. Everyone is talking about meditation these days. She says, all my friends are doing meditation. She says, I get really stressed. I get really anxious. And I really think meditation is going to be fantastic. I said, you could do meditation. But what happens when you're standing here at work while you're working? I said, how do you meditate while you're standing here at work? I said, this is the difference between the practice that, that I have. I said, there's a practice that I have which is called 24 hours meditation. And I said, it's the use of a mantra. And so it's very good to sit down and meditate, to have that practice as well. But there's a way of just calming the mind down right here, right now. She says, oh, I'm fascinated, tell me more. And I said, take a word and try and repeat it. She said, what shall I, what shall I use? Now, I, I'm very conscious that I can't just give you a Gurbani mantra. It's not necessarily, this is an English lady on a, on a flight. It's not necessarily going to be a word that she's going to connect with straight away. So I said, if you're going to start with something, I'll give you the word thank you. At every moment, just try and repeat the word thank you to yourself. And see what impact that has on your mindset. And even for someone who's never meditated, who's never done anything in their life, they will automatically start to understand that I will have some changes in the way I think and the way I look at the world and the way I engage with the world when everything that I'm dealing with I have to remind myself of the word thank you. So I said start with this. So as a starting point let us understand what is it that mantra can do. When we start repeating a word, if I was to say to you, imagine for the next two hours, all you did was repeat the word thank you while you're going about your daily duty. Just within yourself, you might start to think, yeah, I can see that that would have some changes in me. How much anger could I have if I'm saying the word thank you? How frustration how frustrated would I get you know when you're driving on the busy streets and someone is driving past and they cut into your lane what's your first reaction your first reaction is what your mind has got used to doing your mind has got used to maybe screaming at that person mentally inside your head you're really frustrated you're really angry and all of a sudden we've allowed our mind's first reaction to impact how we feel. And imagine your first reaction was the same reaction you're having for everything else. Imagine the first reaction was just to continue to say the word thank you. You can just think within yourself, what would those feelings be like? So very easily we can now start to understand how effective it is to have a system of overriding the mind's initial reaction. 
I didn't even go into this much detail with the flight attendant. And by the end of the conversation, she's saying, please write down your YouTube channel. I'm really interested. I want to know, I want to know more about these things. We've forgotten what the Guru has given us. And because we've forgotten what the Guru has given us, we don't understand it, we don't know how to talk about it, and we don't know how to explain it to anyone else. So now, when somebody starts talking to us about Sikhi, we have to go right from the beginning. There was this guy called Guru Nanak, he was a great Guru, we are, we're, we're, we're in big reverence to this amazing thing, what he brought to the world, and he brought this, and he, he treated all the women fairly, and now if you go to the Golden Temple, we feed 100,000 people a day, and all these sorts of things, and you start explaining them, uh, explaining stuff to people, this is why I wear a turban, and we have the long hair, and we have a kirpan, and all these sorts of things. And all of a sudden, what you've ended up doing is you're trying to tell them what your religion is. You're trying to sell them the whole package. And in reality, I think Guru Nanak Dev Ji starts with something a lot simpler. He starts with Ikkunkar Satnam. Ikkunkar Satnam is a message that we don't understand well enough so we don't know how to talk to other people about it. We don't even know how to talk about it amongst ourselves. We don't know how to think about it. There is a way of having a conversation with people, understanding what works for them or what doesn't work for them. Have you ever noticed you can go to work and you can have a conversation about anything, all the greatest politics and all the greatest things? Have you ever gone to work and tried to have a conversation with your colleague about God? You try and say the word God, it's become a swear word these days. Like you can talk about anything else, but why are you bringing up God? This is the office, this is not the place to talk about those kind of things. Isn't that true? You can't do that anymore. But you can talk about meditation and everyone says, oh, I really like meditation. So there's a way of talking about Sikhi rather than Ikunkar, there is one God, his name is true, he is the creator. He all of a sudden, you're talking about that God guy, which most people in the world are saying, I'm not interested in that God. Give me something that's relevant to me. And when you look at Gurbani, actually Gurbani does give us something that's relevant to us. I'm not saying that there isn't an understanding of God. But first, let's just talk to people about what it means to just be a human being. And in reality, nobody wants you to sell them a religion. Nobody wants that. What people want is help me with my problems. Don't tell me about your religion. Tell me how you can make my life any better. When you tell me how to make my life better, maybe I have some time for you. Maybe I have time to listen to your religion. And so we have got into the habit of teaching people the Sikh religion and we've forgotten that the Guru is trying to make our life better. Gurbani is trying to make your life better. Gurbani is not trying to give you a whole new religion to join. The Guru is not trying to give you a new religion to join. The Guru is trying to say there is a way of understanding your life. There's a way of understanding the world around you, how everything is connected. And that is the way to think. And that is the, 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 the grounding with which all the other religious things are, are built upon. So this Naam subject is very important. So let's look at what our spirituality options are. One of the main motivators I had to, to starting the work that I'm doing through Nanak Naam one of the main motivators was people were leaving Sikhi because people had said to me, Sikhi is a nice religion, we like your values, but there's no spirituality in Sikhi. So they started going elsewhere. Big, big groups of young Punjabis in the UK and everywhere else, they're saying, we've got to go to other places. They were fascinated by Kundalini Yoga. They're fascinated by going to silent retreats, meditation retreats, mindfulness, all these sorts of things. Now, of course, there's nothing wrong with those, but at least understand what the technique is that your own, that's in your own house. And we don't because nobody knows how to talk about 
meditation and mindfulness from a Gurmat perspective. It's very hard. Very few people are talking about these things. So people had actually said to me, we like the religion of Sikhi, but there's no spirituality in Sikhi. In order to be spiritual and get the real calmness of spirituality, that what that offers, you have to go elsewhere. And for me, we are the students of the king of spirituality. The Guru and Gurmat, Gurbani, Guru Nanak Dev Ji, that is the king of spirituality. There was a time in India when all the spiritual schools recognized that the father of spirituality lives in the house of Nanak. All the spiritual schools of India, Indian spiritual thinking, knew that the father of spirituality is the Guru in the lineage of Guru Nanak. Everyone from different traditions would come and they say, we have to pay our respect to the Guru. So something's gone wrong. Somewhere, Sikhi has forgotten its spiritual roots. And somewhere we've forgotten that Sikhi is about you and me, normal people. Not about the Sikh people, the normal people. So how does it help us do this? How does it help us solve our problems? First and foremost, Sikhi educates us on why we get the problems in the first place. Today, meditation and mindfulness is so huge in the whole world, but the way that they're being packaged by a lot of these New Age spiritualities is they're treating meditation as a way to calm yourself down, as a relaxation technique. And that's how the kind of conversation generally goes. Oh, meditation's good. I get really stressed and meditation's really good to, to relax me. But what is happening is the modern world is only taking just the top layer of, of spirituality. Nobody wants to go any deeper than that. But all of these spirituality techniques have come from India. The deeper spirituality techniques have come from India. And in the old days and in Indian traditions, you can't just practice the spirituality without actually understanding some of the wisdom that goes with it. So I like to say that the, the, there's, there's, there's two parts to spirituality. What you're seeing in the modern world is the Tian, the meditative practice, but you're not getting the Gyan. Gyan and Tian go together. The wisdom and the spiritual practice. So the first thing I want to share with you today is just the practice on its own is fine, but it's a very superficial layer. It doesn't even begin to help us understand why does this problem happen in the first place. It's like the way you go to the doctor. You go to the doctor and you say something is hurting. Very little time is spent on trying to understand the cause of the problem. Most of the time the doctor will say, give it a few days, it'll go away. Or if it doesn't go away, they say, come back. If it's not gone away, I'll give you some medicine. What is the cause of the problem? That is not, that is not the, the conversation that is generally had with the doctor. The same thing is happening with modern spirituality. So the first thing that Gurmat spirituality does is it tries to educate us. The reason it tries to educate us is imagine you have a car and you keep going back to the mechanic and you keep saying to the mechanic, no matter what happens, no matter how many times you fix it, the tire keeps going flat. The mechanic, the first time he might fix it, second time he might fix it, the third time he said, well, tell me something more. Tell me where are you parking the car? What are you doing with the car? so that you don't have to keep coming back to the mechanic. Maybe the mechanic themselves will get fed up with you. Say, so why do you keep doing the same problem? Guruji is trying to do the same thing to us. Rather than just giving you a technique that says, this is how you fix your problem, the first thing the Guru is trying to do is trying to educate us. Why does the problem happen in the first place? And the Guru doesn't mix their words. The Guru goes right to the heart of the problem. How do, we, how do we try and talk about our problems? We try and talk, talk about our problems like, oh, I'm feeling a bit stressed because at work, because of this, this thing happened, that thing happened, my, 
my husband said this to me, my wife said this, I've got too much pressure with the kids, my family, I can't get along with my in-laws, all these sorts of things. We start talking about all the external things and the Guru says, no, 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 no. You haven't gone to the root of the problem. The Guru always goes to the root of the problem. Interestingly, that's why Gurbani starts with the root, the Mool, Mool Mantar. The whole of Guru Granth Sahib starts with the Mool Mantar. Because the Mool Mantar straight away starts to deal with the root of the problem. And the root of the problem is the very way in which you and me understand ourselves and we understand the world around us. The root of the problem. We don't understand what is this? What is this body and mind? We give it a very crude word. We say, me. This is me. I don't need to deal with this. And then whenever problems happen with the me, we blame everything else. He said this to me, this happened, that happened. Some people even say, oh, it's because I'm an Aquarius and I don't get along with a, with a Cancer or a Capricorn. Right? We're blaming everything else. But the Guru saying, hang on, what did you say this was again? He said, Guru, it's me. He said, ah, that's your problem. The very way that you labeled the thing that has the problem is the starting point. And Guru refers to this concept called ha me. He calls it this me me. Ha me, me me, I I. That's what the word ha me means. He says this ha me, this me me, this myself. I think the best word to translate ha me in English is myself. Look at the difference. In most of your English translations, it says the word ha me is ego. Ego means I am better than you. I'm superior to, to you in whatever way. I'm taller than you, I'm shorter than you, I'm cleverer than you, I'm a better sick than you. That's what the word ego means. And so when you read it, it says, oh, Guruji wants me to get rid of my ego. Oh, Guruji wants me to be humble. Guruji doesn't want me to say, I am better than you. Guruji wants me to say, I am lower than you. But that's not what the word homme means. That's perhaps what the word hankar means. Hankar is just one of the punch chore. Yeah? They're nothing compared to the bigger problem, which is called myself. Not I am better than you needs to be changed to I am not better than you. The I am, the beginning part of that sentence, is the root cause of all of your problems. And Guruji calls this the major disease. Of all the diseases that you have, the major disease is called myself. I am. I exist. This body-mind thing that I'm walking around in, is called me. Guruji says, Homme dhirag roga hai, daru bhi is mine. The solution is also to try and understand this. So, how is this relevant to Naam Simran? The Naam Simran then is no longer just a technique for calling God. And that's generally how we understand Naam Simran. I like to call it God calling. God calling. We sit here, we look up, and we say, Wahikru. And then we wait. And then we say it a few more times, and then we wait. We say, Wahikru, are you coming? And that's generally what we've reduced Nam Simran to. And while there may be some merit to that, and certainly the Guru encourages you to not think about yourself all the time, but think about the bigger picture. Guru also gives you another understanding of what Naam is trying to do. And we understand this. So we've talked about Homme, the myself. Guru says, Homme nave nal virodhe. The myself is the rival of Naam. So while you're sitting there saying, I am calling God, come to me, God, God, come to me, the Guru saying, you haven't quite got it yet. The Naam is still 
a part of the me, I am. And the I am is our biggest problem. Let's look at this. What do we focus on with our life? I am not happy. I am depressed. I am stressed. Many more sentences we can add like that. I'm a constant worrier. I am an overthinker. This is just how I am. All of those sentences, we focus on everything except the I am. Because the I am, to deal with the I am, is a little bit too difficult. So I can deal with the word stress, give me something. You're just going to the doctor and you're saying, stress, give me something to deal with that. And this is what the other techniques, if they're not understood with their spiritual origin, I'm not actually saying anything is wrong with the other techniques, but the other techniques without understanding, it's like somebody giving you the medicine without giving you the instructions how to use the medicine. That's what you're seeing in the modern world today. So that's what you're seeing. You can download an app and you just say, oh, I'm feeling stressed. You press a button, stressed, and the app says, okay, well, just listen to this. Good, fine, at least it's better than nothing. At least people are starting to meditate. But the I am hasn't been dealt with. And if you don't deal with the I am, you're guaranteed that that problem is gonna come back again. Because the I am isn't the receiver of problems, the I am is the cause of problems. The I am is not the thing, is not the victim of all your problems. The I am is the thing that's causing the problems in the first place. Nam, when Guru says, Homme Name Nal Virodha, the I am is the rival of Nam. So as long as you're doing Nam Simran, saying, I am doing Nam Simran, that is not going to get you to the space that the Guru wants you to be in. The space that the Guru wants you to be in has a bit of a journey that we need to go through. And bear in mind, this is not restricted to just the Punjabis or the Sikhs or anything like that. Guru Nanak Dev Ji quite clearly tells us Sansara Rogi. Guruji says, don't think you're special in any way. The whole world is stuck with this big disease. But then what does he say? Sansara Rogi Nam Daru. Guruji comes with the, 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 the problem, demonstrates the problem, shows us the problem, but say, I'm, I've also come with the solution. So, what is the rogue? Homme is the rogue. So you have to use Nam as a way to fix the problem. If you're not using Nam to fix the problem, then it's like somebody's given you a, uh, some sort of uh, medicine that you're supposed to have with your mouth, and you've taken the medicine and you're just rubbing it on your skin. It's the wrong way to use the medicine. You've gone to the doctor, you've taken the medicine, but then you go back and you say, yeah, I felt a bit better because of that, thank you. But then next week, oh, it's come back again. Because the doctor is saying, no, you didn't use the medicine properly. The medicine is something for you to have in your mouth. You're supposed to drink it. You're supposed to taste it. You said, yeah, but it's a bit bitter. It's a bit hard to swallow this medicine. Can't I just rub it? Can't I just deal with the superficial issues? Can't I just use Nam Simran to deal with my stress? The guru is saying, no. That's not what this medicine is for. You want that medicine, you've got to go somewhere else. I'm going to deal with the problem. Yeah, Mera Ved Guru Govinda. My doctor is the Guru, and what does the Guru do? Har Har Naam Aukad Mukhadeva. He is given you for you to swallow this medicine, and the medicine is Har Har Naam. Yeah? So we have to understand before we start talking about what is Naam, before we start talking about how to do Nam Simran, 
and why Nam Simran doesn't seem to work, let's understand what is Nam Simran trying to fix. Nam Simran is trying to fix a problem. I came across a Shabbat just the other day. And while I'm talking, I remembered how useful that Shabbat really is, and I'm just going to bring it up. Okay, this is on Ang number 39. I don't know if you have this very interesting Shabbat. And it starts with the word, Jag Homme Mel Dukhapaya, Sri Raga Mahalla Tija. If you have the app in front of you, try and follow the Shabbat with me. Jag Homme Mel Dukhapaya. Guruji says, Jag Homme Mel Dukhapaya. The whole world is suffering because of the filth of this thing called myself. Malalagi Duje Bhai. And you're stained, you're stained with this idea. Duje Bhai is introducing a concept called duality. But duality is basically the idea that because I think of myself, I think of everything else as separate from me. And he says, this is a stain that you're stained with. Malahomme Toti Kivena Uttare. This myself stain that you're stained with is very difficult to wash off. Toti Kive, how do we do it? It doesn't seem to come off. Jeso Tiratanai. No matter how many times I go and I bathe in holy places, remember that was, the, that was the spiritual traditions of the time. Whatever your problems are, you just go and, and have a holy bath in one of these places. And Guruji says, you can have a bath, it seems to clean the outside, but it doesn't seem to clean this thing on the inside. So, performing all sorts of things, People are sweared, smeared with twice as much filth. Now Guruji is actually starting to give us a bit of a slap in the face. Saying, you think you're so spiritual that you're going to all these places. What do you come back and tell your friends? I have been there. I am the person who's gone and done yatra and this and this and this place. Guruji is starting to say, you went to wash off the ego. You came back doubly strong because now you have an even stronger ego that says, I am better than you because I have been there and you haven't. And all the techniques that you're doing is adding to your ego. You try lots of different things. And so Guruji carries on. Just by reading about this stuff, reading spiritual books, now Guruji is giving you a second technique. People think spirituality is reading lots of books. Today, we have the unfortunate position that anyone who wears a kurta pajama and sits on stage, they get announced as gyanni. Gyan. But what we mean is that they know a lot of stuff. Gyanni is not someone who's read a lot of books. That's just, maybe you can call that person a granthi the one who's read all the grants. But Gyanni is someone who's got Brahm Gyan, one who's actually got an understanding of that divine, who's found it, who's connected with it. And Guruji says, by reading lots of books doesn't actually solve this problem. Go ask the real Gyanis, the ones who actually found it, not by reading books, but by reading themselves. Then the Rahau line, Man mere gur sharana ave if you go to the Guru, the one that actually has the solution, if you fall at the feet of the Guru, then you will become truly pure. This is the most interesting line, which is why I'm sharing it with you. Guruji says that Manamuks are doing Nam Simran and it's not working for them. Have you ever heard of such a concept? I was shocked. Guruji saying Nam Simran doesn't work for the people who are still lost within their mind. Man har har kar thakke. They're tired of doing Nam Simran because it hasn't worked for them. Mal na this, this ego of I am is not getting washed. So Guruji is really pointing out and saying doing Nam Simran without dealing with the I am is not working. Man mele pagat na 
when the mind is filled with the ultimate disease, Guruji started by saying, what is the disease? The myself is the disease. As long as myself, I am, is in your mind, Pagati na ho vai, pagat na ho vai. you cannot do meditation. You cannot do Naam Simran, Naam na paya jai. You cannot actually get this Naam that the Guru is trying to give you. As long as you have the dirt of me, myself. Man mukh mele, mele mue. The mind facing people. Yeah, man mukh doesn't actually mean what we use the word man mukh for today. Today we use the word, I'm a gurmukh, you're a man mukh. Man mukh has become a swear word. I'm a gurmukh, you're a man mukh. I'm a gurmukh because I go to the guru and you're a man mukh because you go outside and, and you're, you're partying all the time. So let me give you a little bit of wisdom as I've understood it. If you call yourself a Gurmukh, you're not a Gurmukh. Simple. Most people think, I used to cut my hair, I used to drink, I used to eat, I used to do all these out, outside things. And so I was a Manmukh. Now I don't do those things, so I'm a Gurmukh. I've now grown my hair. But, and I've now started doing part, and I've started doing this, I've started doing that. If you think that you can call yourself a Gurmukh, all you need to do is pull out your Gurbani app again and look up Shabads where Guru is talking about Gurmukh or Gursik. Read the Shabads where Guru is talking about a Gurmukh or a Gursik, then you will never dare to call yourself a Gurmukh or a Gursik because the place that the Guru has given a Gurmukh or a Gursik is so high you get so ashamed just reading that Bani saying, how on earth did I call myself a Gurmukh? The Gurmukh is a very high title. Yeah? So, in reality, it's safer to call yourself a Manmukh. You're probably much closer to a Manmukh than you are a Gurmukh. I know I am at least. Much closer to the Manmukh side of the scale, not the Gurmukh side of the scale. Manmukh Mele is filthy because they have manmuk is now the person who keeps thinking I am this is the definition of a manmuk that means the definition of a gurmuk is one who sows who knows I am not the definition of a manmuk is given in the Shabbat manmuk male what's the male home the person who walks around saying I am me myself that is a manmuk so chances are you've got manmuks with turbans and beards. Chances are, you've got people who've been blessed with Amrit, who are doing all the Amritari things, but they're walking around with this false sense of I am. I believe the Guru would come and call people like us manmuks, not gurmuks. Manmuk male. Male mue, and they die in this. They never actually deal with this their whole life. They actually die with this mal. Jasan pat gawai, and they've they've left this world, and they've lost their honor. Why have they lost this honor? Because humans had the ability to transcend this I am. No other life has the ability to go past the I am. You were born with this human life. You have an understanding. You have an ability to transcend this and you lost that opportunity because you did religious stuff and you walked around saying I am religious if you're saying I am religious or even I am a Gursik the I am hasn't been dealt with Gurparsati Manavase this male is so hard to get rid of this I am is so hard to get rid of only with the Guru's grace can this male be given given up? Malahome Jai Samai. Look exactly at the, the definitions of Guru. What is Gurparsad now? Gurparsadi Manvase. You get the true understanding and Home Jai. Gurparsad is the act of the Guru getting rid of your I am. Gurparsadi Manvase. In the mind, I get the Guru's real way of thinking, and Guru takes the I am away. Jo andhera deepak baliye. Just as in the darkness of a cave, all you need is one small lamp, one small flame,
to change the whole thing. Like a lamp lit in the darkness, Gur Gyan Agyan Dajai. Within me is the cave. The cave of darkness is I think I am. Yet I am here. This mind body thing, the one that I call me, myself, that's my darkness. The Guru has given me a light to get rid of that way of thinking. Ham kiya, ham karenge. I do this and I do that. Ham murak gavar. I'm a fool for saying these such these things. This is why I was shocked by this Shabbat. How clear the Guru clarifies the purpose of what a Sikh is. The person who says, I do this and I do that, Guru says, I'm a murak for saying something like that. Ham kiya, I did this. Ham karenge, I'm going to do this. This is what I do. Ham murak gavar. The ham, the I am, who's saying, I am doing this and I am doing that, that ham is a murak. That ham is a fool. Karne wala visriya. The one who is really here, the one who is really in charge of what's going on here. We haven't even talked about that yet. What's really here. The karta purak is what Guru is talking about here. That you haven't understood. Karne wala visriya. You've forgotten the real one that's in control of your life. Duje bhai piyar. You're in love with the duality. Me, you. Good, bad, all that sort of stuff. Maya jevar dukh nahi. There is nothing as difficult as Maya. Maya means I'm confused by this. This body, this physical world has confused me because the physical world has made me think I am here and you are there and I am different to you. Maya. Yeah? Guru's clarifying the definitions here. Maya jevar dukh nahi. Don't now read an entire Shabbat about Homme and think Maya is to do with something else. Maya is, is, is money or Maya is something else. No, because Guru has used Maya within the context of, of the, the ego, that means Maya is that which is creating the ego. Maya jevar dukh nahi. There's no greater suffering than this. Sab pav thakke sansar. The whole world is wandering around and is exhausted by this. That's why the whole world is now getting more spiritual. Because they're exhausted by this. They spent all of their lives running after, I am running after money. And then when they're tired of money and they're tired of all the, the, the physical and, and, and material things, then they think they go into a spiritual journey and they say, I am going to find myself. Yeah, I have to go find myself. I don't know if you ever tried saying this to a Punjabi parent. Mom, Dad, I'm going to go find myself. <laughs> you know what kind of reaction you're going to get. Like, who's talking to me then? Like, where do you think you are? Oh, Mom, I'm going to go to the Himalayas. I'm going to go find myself. I'm going to go to a silent retreat. You don't need to find yourself. Your parents will give you a chapet and say, here you are. Right? I'll show you where you are. Right? They didn't have this way of thinking. So if you're going to change from a worldly lifestyle that says, I am worldly, and you're going to go into a spiritual lifestyle and you're going to say, I am spiritual, you haven't actually done anything. You've replaced what you do. That's all you've replaced. I used to go clubbing. I used to stay out late at night. I used to do this. I used to do that. Now I do this, I do that, and I do this. Ham kia, ham karenge. This is what exactly Barney is saying. If you think that you've just changed your actions, I used to stay out late at night and now I wake up early in the morning, you still haven't done it. Don't think by doing stuff, even by waking up and doing your nitanim and all these kind of things, if it doesn't actually go to the root of the problem, which is the I am. If you don't deal with that problem, your nam isn't working. Because you don't know what you're doing Nam Simran for. You're still not doing Nam Simran to call Mr. God, who's the guy with the white beard sitting in the clouds. You're waiting for him. But the I am, Guru is saying, well, hang on. I've never told you God is far away. I've told you God's inside you. You say, yeah, everyone says God's inside me, but it's really not, is it? That's what we think. Oh, yeah, God's inside me. Where's God inside me? I don't know. 
when you pray to God, where do you look? Do you look inside? No, I look up there. Why do you look up there if God is inside you? Does it make sense? Upparwala. Yeah? Nowhere in Guru Granth Sahib does it refer to Paramatma as Upparwala. Yeah? In Punjabi, we all talk about Upparwala, Baba Ji. Yeah? So, what kind of Sikhi are we following? Guru is trying to teach us what Sikhi is. This is why I really, really found this Shabbat fascinating. It seems to cap encapsulate the whole thing. Maya jevad dukh nahi, sapav thakke sansar. The whole world is tired of this. Gurmati sukh paaye. With the Guru's understanding, you'll get real peace and happiness. Such a naam or tar, Guru will give you something that is true. This is a very fascinating word here. Each word of Gurbani has so much depth in it. We'll read this, the true name. That's not what it means. Such a naam isn't the true name. It, the word such, and this is where we get it from. Professor Saeb Singh, he's done fantastic work to try and understand the, 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 the etymology of words, the, the real uh, meaning behind words. Professor Saeb Singh Ji, who, who's well respected amongst the whole Panth, um, for translating the whole of Guru Granth Sahib Ji. He says, such equals permanent. Guruji gives you something that is permanent to focus on and takes away everything that you are focusing on, which is impermanent, temporary. This man I am is temporary. The Guru says, as long as you spend your whole life thinking about the man, you're thinking about something that's temporary. And the Guru says, I have something to offer you that has always been true. Ad such, jugad such. What is ad such, jugad such? Ekonkar. These are big concepts. All of these things take a bit of time to understand. So I don't want to go on a tangent to talk about those other subjects. What is ekonkar and what, why is it permanent? Let's, within the conversation of the mayor and Nam, see whether we can sort of try and understand. The Guru has given me peace because the Guru has given me Naam on something that is permanent. Such a Naam, Urtar, has really put it within me. Jisno mele so mele, ho tis balhare jao. I have no control over this. The Guru is the one who is in control of doing all this. Because, why don't I have any control over it? Gurbani is fantastic. It tells you lots of information on, in Hukam Namas, but in the end, it never leaves you with an ego. It never leaves you with, the, with a false hope that you think, yeah, I'm going to do this now. Because how does that sentence start? I am. I'm going to do this. I'm going to wake up. I'm going to do this. Gurus always try to end the Hukam Nama saying, I have no control. I am nothing. There is something greater here that is in control. Because don't ever fall for the biggest trap in the ego. The biggest trap of all the egos in the world is the spiritual ego, is the Gurmukh ego. I'm a Gurmukh. I know all the answers. Only come to my Jatha. Only our Jatha will tell you how to do it. Only do this, only do that. We're the ones who can give you Naam. Nobody else can give you Naam. That's the biggest ego. Because you've never dealt with the I am. Man. Or what we have is collective egos, Jathebandi egos. Our Jatha, our group is better than your group. It's just a collective, it's just a group ego, tribal ego. So Guruji ends by saying that don't think that you have control in this. That leads on to more questions and we'll try and attack that afterwards. Otherwise people will say, why do I need to do Naam Simran then? I'll just wait for the Guru Prasad. Right? I just don't need to get up, I don't need to do anything, I'll just wait for the Guru Prasad. Like, what on earth am I going to do? So we'll try and address that a bit later. E man pagti ratya sach bani nijatha. This mind is now, after the Guru Prasad, is now able to do Nam Simran. This mind is now engrossed in, in true meditation, true worship. Sach bani nijatha. So the true understanding, the true wisdom has gone in. The true wisdom has gone in and it's replaced the ego wisdom. Man rati, jehva rati, har gun sache gao. 
with the mind so imbued and the tongue imbued and as well sing the praises of the lord i'll go on to this now as to why singing is is an important part of it nanak naam na visara guruji ends by saying the person who is in this stage they don't ever forget naam what do people like me do we have to try and remind ourselves all the time why haven't you done naam simran like all the time every 2 seconds your mind is on something else and then you think oh if you're lucky you think oh i have to do naam simran most of the world they're not even aware of nam you know people ask so many questions like oh why why is sikhi why do we have to do this it seems so hard it's so restrictive we don't understand this medicine dealing with the biggest problem in the world guess what most of your friends outside they don't even know it exists and we are questioning why we should take this medicine because we haven't understood the problem we think the happiness that the world outside has to offer seems far better and especially this happens with young teenagers they say mom dad why can't i go out my my friends are all going out and they're doing all these sorts of things they're all drinking and clubbing and doing all these sorts of things you know why the teenagers are asking that because they're looking at their friends and they're saying they look happier mom dad why are you stopping my happiness that's the kind of question why do i need to grow my hair why do i need to do this we've 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 completely forgotten how to talk about sikhi we talk about sikhi the guru tells you to keep your hair what since when was that the first message i'm not saying that that's not the message of 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 the sikh gurus but when did that become the first message to feel guilty about the fact that you don't keep your hair we're teaching it's like going to a, a a kindergarten child and trying to teach him the phd stuff start from the basic start from the beginning the beginning is ikunkar satnam karta purak try and understand those concepts and believe me they are not there is one god his name is true and he is the doer of everything or he is the creator forget that he gurbani is talking about something far more true to you and because we haven't understood sikhi we don't we now at a situation we can't explain them to our kids we were of a generation and certainly the generations before us where we were told sawal nahi puchi da hunda don't ask questions so you try and ask your parents i don't even know if you ever asked your parents why should we do naam simran you were too afraid to even ask your parents these questions and you knew that they didn't have the answers to it because they were too afraid of their parents So we've come from generations of generations of people that says you just do japji sahab every day. And you say, do you understand what it says? No, I don't understand what it says, but karo. Do it. Why? Cuz baba ji is looking. He's watching. He's going to he's going to give you good stuff. Good grades. Yeah, baba ji is going to give you good grades. You bow down to the guru nanak photo before you go to your exams. and what we're facing now is the, the 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 youngsters and the kids are saying those kids are doing pretty well and they don't seem to have to do the baba ji stuff and that guy has got a really successful job and i know what he was like at university and college he was doing all the putte kam and he still got a good job why did you stop me from doing all the bad things because he's still successful so we haven't we are facing a very big dilemma these days that we are having to answer questions that we never had to ask ourselves or we certainly didn't have the guts to ask our parents because we were too afraid of them fear was a technique of 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 us get, staying in sikhi but our kids are not afraid of us anymore so it's a different world we have to answer the questions in a different way nanak naam na visra such mahesama and guruji ends by saying that the people who are in this state of mind they don't ever forget naam simran such mahesama they have dived into the ocean of truth into the ocean of permanence little bit cryptic little bit poetic and sometimes in poetry you you try and look at it and say well what is guruji really saying Well that's the whole point of sitting and doing vichar. That's the whole point where we can get together and say, right, what do I do about this shabd? I think this is one of the 
easier Shabbos to understand because it's very clearly telling you what the problem is. So the purpose of me bringing that Shabbat up is because we have to understand Nam Simran is to get rid of I am. If you're on a journey that is I am trying to find God, get rid of the I am and God appears. Get rid of the I am and God manifests. Is this Gurmat? Well, let's see. We have Barney saying, Jab hum hote, tab tu nahi. As long as there was an I am, I didn't know where God was. I couldn't see it. You just weren't here. Ab tu hi, nahi. Now that God is here, I am not here. So as long as there is a you, there cannot be a God. Jab hum hote, tab tu nahi. So as long as there is an I am, there cannot be a God. You, the I am, will never find God. Keep going on your spiritual journey. Keep doing all the Sikh stuff. As long as you're convincing yourself, I am trying to get closer to God. I am will never find God. Jab ham hote, tab tu nahi. Ab tu hi, main nahi. It's like a mathematical equation. X cannot equal Y, no matter how much effort X does. X has to change into Y, because only Y can equal Y. I cannot find God. The I am has to disappear. Get rid of the I am from the statement, I am trying to find God, and what's left? There's no one trying to find God. There is just God. Nam Simran is not the technique for you to say, I am calling God. Nam Simran is the technique that I am deleting I am. I'm getting rid of the I am. Nam Simran is to delete you. Nam Simran is to get rid of you. You get rid of you, God is left. Why? Because God is locked away inside you. It's already there. Whatever your understanding of God is. God is already inside you, but something is stopping that God from coming out from realizing itself the mind needs to understand that the God is already there so how do we get rid of it you get rid of the obstacle the obstacle is the home so how does Nam Simran do this Nam Simran as far as I've understood it and I always like to make it very clear everything that I'm saying is based on whatever understanding the Guru has allowed me to have. Don't assume what I'm saying is the final wisdom. Go explore Gurbani for yourself. We have a very beautiful tradition where we have not been given a middleman. There is no barrier between you and God. Today, there is no barrier between you and Gurbani either. At least in the old days, you had to say, well, I don't understand the Bani, like I don't know how to read it, I don't have access to Guru Granth Sahib Ji. Today, it's all available to you. You can download it. You can access Gurbani whenever you want, in the language that you want. So, bearing in mind there are limitations of the translations, but they're still mostly accurate, mostly good only for the smaller nuances, the smaller details. Don't get stuck on the translations. Always try and understand Gurbani from the original language. But don't let that be a barrier for you. Don't let any time anything is happening in your life, any situation in your life, convince you that you're not good enough to access the Guru. I was once sitting in a restaurant, my wife and I. The waitress comes over and she says, Baji, can I ask you a question? I was a bit surprised. Like, we're in a restaurant, you don't expect to hear that. She says, Baji, I eat meat. Am I allowed to do part? So can you imagine, somebody has convinced her that until you stop doing this, you're not even good enough to read the part. I said, no matter what you do, start reading part. Do that first. Don't convince yourself that I do this or I do that or I drink or I cut my hair or whatever it is I do so I'm not worthy if Guru Nanak Dev Ji is in your town would you say I'm not worthy to go see or would you go running 
and we're lucky today we have Guru Nanak Dev Ji in every town. People like to think that the time was better when the Gurus were around. It was a lot better when the Gurus were around. If only the Gurus were around, I would be much better in my Sikhi. When the Gurus were around, how hard would it be for you to go and actually access that Guru? Where are you sitting? Where would the Guru have been? By the time you go to the town where you might have heard that the Guru is there, there's no instant live streaming, nothing. You don't know where the Guru is. You see, somebody says, I think the Guru is in this town. It'll take you several months to get to that town by the time Guru might have moved on. Think about how many people in the times of the Gurus got so close, they got to the town where the Guru was staying, but then only to hear, oh, the Guru's gone somewhere else. You think you have it difficult now? We also like to think that if the Guru was here, the Guru could answer my questions. Like somehow Guru Gobind Singh Ji has left us with a more inferior Guru. That's how we treat Guru Granth Sahib. Like Guru Granth Sahib is not quite as good as having the real thing. No, you haven't been left with the inferior Guru. You've been left with all the Gurus. In the old days, maybe you might have only had a chance to speak to one of them. Now you've got Guru Nanak Dev Ji, Guru Angad Dev Ji, Guru Amr Das Ji, Guru you, Where does it stop? And you've got the Pagas, the Pagas that lived after the Gurus, the Pagas that lived before the Gurus. What have you been left with that we think that we have an inferior access to the Guru these days? You've got better access to the Guru these days. So what excuse are we going to have in just picking up an iPhone, iPad, tablet, whatever it is, and saying book, translation, anything, good Sahib, and say, let me actually see what exactly is the Guru saying. What is Nam? What is the technique of Nam Sim? Nam Simran, as I've understood it, has two portions, two sections to it. Two stages. And the first stage is the Guru is giving you a word, not just that you chant the word, the Guru is giving you a word that you have to chant with an emotion, and that emotion is love. So don't do Nam Simran with expectation, or with desires, or anything else. Do Nam Simran with the correct emotion. There's emotion that comes with this medicine. And the emotion is to do it with love. Well, you say love for what? Like, what am I supposed to be in love with? How do I love something that I've never met, never tasted? How do I love God? Very valid questions. Let's put that to one side. First, can you evoke the emotion of love? Can you feel love inside you? Say, oh, I can do that. Not for anything or anyone. Can you have a space within your heart that's loving? That is the, the, the first thing, yeah? Panda Pao, Gurbani talks about, yeah? At the end of Japji Sahib, Jat Pahara, Sunyar, you create yourself as a vessel of love and empty that vessel of all the meh and amrit titta. Then you can pour the amrit into that vessel of love. If you have a vessel of any other emotion, any other intention, then it isn't the right one to do Nam Simran, right? Nam Simran first has to be done with the emotion of love, the intention of love. How do we do that? Now imagine you have a word that you chant lovingly. You don't know who this God is, you don't know who you're chanting it to right now, you've never met this God. Whatever your understanding of God is, even if God is just the environment, even if it's Mother Nature, it's good enough. Gurbani worships Kudrat quite a lot. Use that as your God if that is the God that you understand right now. But know what the purpose is that it's trying to do. So Gurbani starts phase one with using praise. Praise. Praise is to not ask for anything, not have any expectations. How I like to explain it. If you are in love with your partner, your husband, your wife, if you're just singing their praises, you're not doing it for any ulterior motive. You know, young people, when they're in love, they're just staring at each other in the eyes all the time. They don't know why, they just must, they're just lost in the emotion. And they just say, I just love you. Oh, darling, I love you. I love you. That's what they do, right? They just, they don't know what they're doing. They're just lost in the, in the pure enjoyment of just saying the words, I love you. 
Guru is trying to give you an indicator here. Jin Prem Kyo Din He Prabhai. It doesn't mean one who's fallen in love like this googly eye sort of husband, wife, boyfriend, girlfriend love. That's not what I'm talking about. But that is an indicator because we don't know what love for God is. That's why it's useful to talk about these worldly examples. Gurbani spends its whole time giving you spiritual advice through worldly examples. You know, even we have examples of like Lela Majnu. It's like the, 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 the Indian version of Romeo and Juliet. Gurbani is saying like fall in love the way they fell in love. Yeah, so that you can understand, oh, okay, that's the emotion. Yeah, imagine Gurbani, Guru Nanak trying to explain to you how to worship through the example of Romeo and Juliet. Gurbani does that. Yeah, it's not a bad thing to use these examples. The Guru doesn't care. The Guru just wants you to understand it. Just so that you get it. Otherwise, people run the mistake of thinking, oh, he's talking about these things. He, he said boyfriend and girlfriend on stage. Try and understand it. Be mature. You know, we have very immature people in the Panth today. Whatever you say, they want to drag you down. Try and understand the context. How am I going to explain love to someone about love for the divine when they don't even know how to begin with that? I'll use worldly examples. And I may be wrong, and I'll go ask the Guru for forgiveness. Use the emotion of love in order to start your Naam Simran. So that means Naam Simran is no longer God come to me. Naam Simran is now God, you're amazing. Whatever you are, you're amazing. And how do we know this? Because Gurbani has given us the mantra of love that said, Vah, wow. I try and explain this to my young children. They're only two young boys, eight and six years old. And I call Vahe Guru, Vahe Guru Simran, I call it Wow Simran. All you have to do is just think of everything and put the word wow in front of it. And imagine your experience of life. Just one day, walk around where everything, va, 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 is your mantra. Wow. It's raining. Wow. Not, oh no. Everything that your mind will have its, as its first reaction, you override it. Your mind will tell you all the bad things. Oh, look at him, look at her, he's that, you're sitting in the darbar, he's like, what is she wearing, what is he wearing? Oh, there's that person, he owes me money. All these sorts of things your mind is going to be doing these things. The whole point of a mantra is to override those thoughts. The initial stages is to override those thoughts and just say, wow, you're amazing. You can't do that in negative emotions. Try and say that. You can't do it negatively. If you're saying something, wow, unless you're being sarcastic, you can't. It, it evokes that emotion. Wow. It takes your breath away. That's what Vaheguru is. The moment at which the meditator has got their breath taken away where they realize, wow, Guru, now I get what you've been trying to show me. Va is the emotion of love. What does Naam Simran start with? It starts with praise, and the word that we can understand this with that's related to Naam is Namo. You see this a lot in Japsad and even in Gurbani. Name. Namo. I bow down to you. Your greatness is beyond me. You're greater than me. You are amazing. I'm just in awe of how fantastic everything is. Now, initially, somebody asked me a question, is that a bit fake? Like you're just saying wow to everything. What if you don't mean it? Initially, it'll feel a little bit like you don't mean it. But try. And experiment with mantras. This is going to be my other thing that I, I tell people. Experiment with the mantra that works for you. If va doesn't work for you, try something else. This is why I said to that lady in the, in the plane, I said, try thank you. At every moment, say thank you. What you're doing is you're thanking the universe. Thank you, thank you, thank you. They won't all feel fake. Or maybe in the beginning, it'll feel like you don't mean it. But over time, your mind will start to learn to mean it. And it won't take you very long, trust me. Try just for one day. Forget one day, try just for one hour. Just one hour. 
and you don't have to sit down to do this one. Because Gurbani has given us a technique, Uthat the Bat at the Sovat Jagar. When you're awake, when you're sitting, when you're walking around, when you're eating, this is what Saas Giras means. That with every breath, the word Saas means breath, and Giras means bite of food. With every breath and every bite of food, no matter what you're doing, you should be doing Naam Sa. Saas, Saas. With every breath, wow, thank you, you're amazing. Do it in whatever language works for you. A bit controversial. Most people think Waheguru is the only thing that you're allowed to say. But if you open Guru Granth Sahib Ji, there are so many mantras. If you want to go by Guru, Guru Granth Sahib Ji, Har is the most important mantra. Very rarely do you get six sitting together and doing Har. But that mantra comes up more than any other mantra. So I'm not saying don't do Vaheguru mantra. I'm not demoting Vaheguru mantra. Bhai Gurdas Ji very clearly says that Vaheguru is the mantra that was unique to Guru Nanak. Guru Nanak brought the mantra of Vaheguru. It's very powerful. But I'm also realistic in that I understand some people don't connect with that word. Maybe that word is a bit advanced. Try an easier mantra. You know, there's a, there's a mantra in, in Gurbani, Hare Namaste, Hare Namhe. Namaste is a mantra. You said, how can that be? That's Hindu stuff. Do you see all these kind of things that we've started doing with the Pant? We're starting to question even things that are in Guru Granth Sahib Ji. Hare Namaste, Hare Namah. And Gurbani has also used these words in slight variation, variations. We say, oh, you can't use Namaste. Why? Oh, ours is called Namastang. No, Gurbani has Namaste, Guru Gobind Singh Ji has Namastang. What is the purpose of Gurus giving you so many mantras? Because the Guru says, just start doing something. Don't keep making excuses. Oh, I tried that month and it doesn't work for me. Well, try a different one. Guru Granth Sahib's full of them. There's probably, I don't know if anyone's ever tried to list all the mantras. In fact, you probably couldn't do it because you can take any line from Gurbani and that can become your mantra. If a mantra doesn't work for you, try a sentence. Use a sentence. Whatever the sentence is. What if the sentence was, I love you? Try. Nam Simran is there for you to experiment. And all of this fits under the category of Nam. Yeah? Nam Simran has many flavors. Pick which one you like. But do one, pick one. Because it's a medicine. It's like you go to the doctor and say, oh, they're all many different colors. The doctor says they all got the same ingredient and then they all got Nam. They just got many different flavors. So pick a mantra and use it with the emotion Namo, I love you. I'm, I, I'm in awe of you. I can't believe how huge you are and how insignificant I am. Namo is the beginning emotion that you go into it, but it should never stop there. Because if we stop there, we think that we're doing the Nam Simran. But we've understood even by looking at that Shabbat earlier on, that Nam Simran has one focus. Homme Nam Nam Viroda. Nam is to get rid of me. So from Namo, it has to go to Name. I don't exist. I cease to exist. Nam starts with I praise you, I praise you, I praise you. There's still an I in that. But then you stop the I praise you, I praise you, I praise you. You drop the I, praise you, praise you, praise you. Drop the praise, you, you. The purpose of Nam Simran is as outlined by Kabir Ji, Kabir Tu Tu Karta Tu Hua. I became you by doing Tu Hi Tu Hi Tu Hi. I became you and I got deleted. Mujh me raha nahu. I disappeared. That's the purpose of Nam Simran. How many times have we ever been explained that Nam Simran is to delete us? 
Naam Simran is to delete the person doing the Naam Simran. The purpose of Naam is to delete the one who thinks they're doing the Naam Simran. And we're still stuck with God calling. I am calling you, I am calling you, I am calling you. Fine, call God. But call God not from the outside, from the inside. If God calling is what works for you, stop assuming that the God is outside. Understand that the God that you're calling is inside. You're awakening God. Nam Simran is not God calling, it's God awakening, God realizing. When it awakens, it has to rise so much that it just pushes out the me, gets rid of the me. The me comes out from every part of you so that the me just evaporates and the God is all that's left. If God calling is how it works for you. So Nam Simran starts with praise, with the emotion of love and it ends with the disappearing of you, Kabir, tu tu karta, tu hua, mujh me raha nahu. Nothing was left of me. Kabir ji is telling you the process. I did tu hi tu hi until I disappeared. Jab apa parka mit gaya, jat de tat tu. When the barrier between me and everything else dropped, the curtain. Duality, we talked about it earlier on, we're just touching upon it now. Duality is the illusion that I am here and you are over there and I am different to you. That's duality, you and me. Duality begins with individuality. Individuality has the word duality within it. The concept that I am has the, has the delusion that you are different to me. And the whole purpose of ik is that there is no me or you, there is only the oneness. But you only know that not by keep calling the oneness, by realizing the oneness is always here and you get rid of yourself. When that barrier dropped, then all that was seen was the oneness. Harjan Esa Chahiye Jesa Harhi Hoe. Your purpose of Nam Simran is not to call God, your purpose of Nam Simran is to become God. You have to become God. Harjan Esa Chahiye Jesa Harhi Hoe. Kabirji, again. I want such a meditator who is like God. Har jan har antar nahi. There's no difference. Har har jan doi ek hai. God and the, men, and the meditator are not different. God and the meditator are one. The purpose of you doing Nam Simran is to waken up the oneness so that all that remains is God. When someone says, who are you? You say, this is God. And bear in mind, people have been killed for saying this. But this is what the Guru is saying. As I've understood it, I could be wrong. So I hope this gives you a good introduction to Nam Simran what the purpose of Nam Simran is, why it has so far maybe seemed like it hasn't worked. And Nam Simran isn't just to reduce your stress. Nam Simran is to reduce everything in you, then there's no question of stress. Stress is, I am worried about this. Nam Simran is, there is no me who is worried about anything. This is God, dealing with God is God's problem, nothing to do with me. Where's the stress? People have done so much Nam Simran that somebody comes and says, I'm going to chop your body from limb to limb. He said, no, you're not. God is chopping up God. I'm going to cut your children and put them in a heart around your neck. He said, no, you're not. You don't have the power to do everything. Kartapalk is doing everything. God is killing God. This is the tradition that we come from. Those Shaheeds weren't just brave warriors that we have to look at them like warriors all the time. They were enlightened masters. They were enlightened masters and because they were enlightened masters, they could become Shaheed. It was the Gyan of the Guru, it was the practice of Nam Simran that made them so willing to die because the Nam Simran had already killed them. 
jeevat mare. All these terms start to make sense. Be dead while you're alive. Jeevat mare. Nam Simran is to die. Now the question is, are you ready to die? Because if you're not, you're not ready to do Nam Simran. And the Guru says this, Pahla Maran Kabool. First be ready to die, Jeevan ki chhad aas. Get rid of the hope that you're going to stay alive. Ho sabna ki ren ka, to ao Reduce yourself to that level. Reduce yourself to dust. Be ready to be burnt into ashes. Then you're ready to come to the Guru. Because if you're not ready to die, you're not ready to come to the Guru. But if you're not ready to die, you're also not ready to give up your problems. The whole purpose of dying is not to make you miserable. The purpose of dying is to give up your problems. Dukh parhar, sukh kar le jai. This death is not a sad death. death. This death is one that delivers happiness. Kabir jis marne te jag dare, mere man anand. The death that everyone else says is sad, Kabir ji says, I get so much khushi from this. This is a spiritual death. And this death is giving you happiness, the one thing that all of us are looking for. Nam Simran is to die. Are you ready? Guru Gobind Singh Ji asked for a head. Guru Nanak Dev Ji also asked for a head. These are not different concepts. These are the same concepts. These are not different Gurus. This is the same Guru. And Guru Granth Sahib Ji, every time you go, you are giving your head when you bow down to the Guru. Say, Guru, here, take it, please take it. What we do is we go to the Guru and say, Guru, please give me some stuff. This is not the path of taking stuff. This is the path of giving the one thing that the Guru wants from you. The I, the myself.